Hey, what is up guys, MKBHD here, and this is your first look at the Samsung Galaxy S6. Now Samsung has announced two new phones today, so the Galaxy S6 and the Galaxy S6 Edge, and I have videos about both up right now, so definitely be sure to check out that Edge video as well. It'll be the first link below that like button. But this Galaxy S6 is definitely the more traditional looking of the two new phones. So this is the totally reimagined Samsung flagship, supposedly rebuilt from the ground up in its design. But if you ask me, it has a lot of elements that remind me of devices I've used in the past. But yeah, so the leaks were right. You can see it looks like another Samsung phone from the front. And then it has chamfered metal sides to grip. Real metal this time, not plastic that's painted to look like metal. And the button placement is all on point. It kind of feels like a mini Note 4 in the hand, except for the back, which switches over to this very shimmery, very glossy, very slippery glass back. It's Gorilla Glass 4 on the back. And you don't actually have to hold that glass though, since the glass curves on the edges right to the metal. So your hand is basically just holding the metal all the time. So at least it has that going for it. It is slightly thinner than the Galaxy S5. It's just 6.8 millimeters thin. And it's also a bit narrower from left to right thanks to the super thin bezels on the sides, kind of like the LG G3. So that is one thing I really like. It's a 5.1 inch display, but it manages to fit into a pretty compact, usable size body, even with the home button and the chin and everything. And speaking of that display, it is gorgeous. So it's a 5.1 inch Quad HD AMOLED display that gives it a pixel density of 577 pixels per inch. It basically looks like a piece of paper when looking at sharp text or images or video or anything really, it's really impressive to look at. Plus it gets super bright up to 600 candelas per meter squared. That's extremely bright for an OLED display or any smartphone display really. And yeah, it's absolutely beautiful. Colors are super saturated. It will likely be the best display on any smartphone when this phone is released. So that's Samsung at its best right there. Only thing that remains to be seen is how long the battery will last. So obviously the Galaxy S5 had a 1080p display. So I'll have to see how long this Galaxy S6 with its 2,550 milliamp hour battery can last when you put through his paces in real world use. I'll definitely be testing that a lot in the review. Now, another thing Samsung has always done really well is the camera and the Galaxy S6 is no exception to that rule. It's rocking a new 16 megapixel sensor, but with all new optics. So an F 1.9 maximum aperture, which is super fast and I'm glad that that's improving. And so that combined with optical image stabilization should make some awesome images and video and should be even better in low light too. There's also a shortcut to it just by double tapping the home button from anywhere. So it's kind of like that Motorola double twist and it's actually pretty fast. So if some action unfolds in front of you, you don't have to think twice or anything, just double tap the home button and you can take a photo in probably a matter of under a second. It's also capable of 4K video again. And yes, I know the camera protrudes a little bit on the back and people have been talking about that a lot, but at least it's right in the middle. So it doesn't really affect a lot. It doesn't affect typing when sitting on a table. I tried that. So it's not really as much of a big deal as some people have made it out to be. Also, you get a very wide angle front facing camera too, which also has an F 1.9 aperture plus some neat selfie tricks. So you can use your finger to tap the IR sensor on the back of the phone to take a photo since it's sort of a natural place for your finger to rest. So it reminded me overall, this phone, a little bit of the Nexus 4 with that glossy glass back, which by the way, is a serious fingerprint magnet. And it also reminded me a little bit of the iPhone 6, of course, with the bottom of the phone, the rounded metal, the speaker grills, and also with the improved fingerprint reader in a good way, because it's a lot faster and finally only requires a touch instead of a swipe to unlock and get into things. It's definitely on top of the spec game though, with an octa-core 64 bit chip, uh, three gigabytes of RAM. It's not IP67 certified anymore, so no water resistance and no expandable storage or removable back, but it added Qi wireless charging support and an infrared blaster on the top and fast charging for 50% charge in 30 minutes with the supported charger. Now, Samsung promised me something when they told me about this phone. They told me they cut down on the excess software by 40%. And I don't know how you measure that, but we all know by now that TouchWiz is infamous by how heavy it is, how slow it can make phones feel, and also how ugly it is. Now, unfortunately, it's still not pretty. It's, it's running on top of Android 5.0 Lollipop, so there are you know little flatter elements here and there. You have some material design once in a while, but you still have a swipe over to Samsung's My Magazine. You still have all of Samsung's ugly stock icons and Samsung's wallpapers and still have some preloaded apps, like a few Microsoft ones and Samsung's Milk Music. So it's not totally gone, but 
at least it feels fast. I was actually genuinely impressed just scrolling around through home pages and opening and closing apps and flying through multitasking at how smooth and quick the software glided through everything. Animations didn't stutter, uh, there wasn't really any lag either, so I can't say that about any other Quad HD phone, even my Nexus. So this is definitely the smoothest Quad HD phone out there, which is promising. I still would have liked to see more cut out of TouchWiz or at least some redesign of the icons or something like that, but overall the software experience is definitely an improvement. So overall, it's looking like the initial gut reaction a lot of people have to this phone is the design, and that makes sense. People wanna see a big visual change on the outside, and I gotta say, this is not the prettiest phone Samsung has ever made, but I can tell you it's two different things to look at the phone versus actually holding this phone in your hand. It's actually one of the best feeling phones Samsung has made in a while, thanks to the new materials and the tighter bezels. And of course that gorgeous display doesn't hurt either. So there you have it. It's the most tame version of Samsung's two new flagships announced today. Definitely let me know what you guys wanna see in the full review when that goes live. Thank you for watching this first impressions and I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Peace.